While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. So the, from there, the next thing, the next thing that shows a level of hatred towards your people is when you hold grudges. Pull up that definition of grudge. When you hold grudges. If you hold grudges, you're showing a level of hatred towards your people. You're showing a level of hatred towards the nation of Israel. Read, read, both of, read both of them. Grudge. A persistent feeling of ill will or resentment resulting from a past insult or injury. So when you hold a grudge, you hold it on to something somebody did to you. And they, probably don't, they may not even know that you had an offense, but you holding a grudge. Now, when you hold a grudge, it's a persistent feeling of ill will or resentment resulting, resulting from a past insult or injury. Somebody did something to you two years ago, and every time you see that person, you think about it. I can't believe, and I'm just going to use stepping on the shoe as an example. That ain't, we know that ain't no sin, but just something. Like he stepped on my shoe and didn't say excuse me. And you hold on to it. So every time you see this person, that, that, that hatred grow deeper and deeper and deeper. And what it do, it, don't, it, not, it, it, don't not, it, it not only pushes you away from that person, it pushes you away from everybody else when you hold on to a grudge. You may think that it's just between you and that person. No, nah, it, it, it go deeper because now you are going to withhold your gifts and talents from building up the nation because now you're like, I don't want to get hurt again. Uh, I don't want this. I don't want nothing bad to happen to me. I don't want nobody to offend me and make me feel that feeling again. So now you're withholding, you withholding things. That's what, that's what happens when you hold a grudge. Pull that definition back up. Read the uh, second one. Be resentfully unwilling to give, grant, or allow something. You withhold. Let's, now let's go to Leviticus 19 and 18. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If your brother or sister do something that, that make you feel a certain type of way, the scriptures say, debate thy cause with thy neighbor. You go and talk to your brother or sister. Hey, you, you stepped on my shoe. Hey, I ain't like it. You stepped on my shoe and ain't say excuse me. I ain't like that. And we know, like I said, that's, we know that's not a sin. That's a, just a light example. But you go and talk to your brother or sister. You debate your cause with your neighbor. And I use, the, I use the example of a shoe because that's not sin. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor. Matthew 18 is dealing with, when you're dealing with Matthew 18, you're dealing with something, you're dealing with a sin. Your brother or sister sinned against you. They lied on you. They stole something from you. That you apply, you go to them, you go to them, apply Matthew 18. They deny it, act like ain't nothing happened. Then you just go, go up the level, go to bring, a, a, bring a witness of leadership. Bring two or three witnesses, and, but you deal with it. You don't hold a grudge because now you're holding that grudge. That, that, um, that verb definition say you're going withho you to withhold. You're going to withhold things because you got a grudge. You're being revengeful. You know what? Since they ain't accept, they ain't accept my gift, they ain't accept this, you know what? I ain't going to do nothing no more. That's holding a grudge. That's showing that you got hatred for your people. You don't love your people. That's hatred. Uh, from there, go to go to First Corinthians chapter thirteen, and verse four. Let's see how we how we supposed to act. The book of First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. So this is charity is another word for love. So it says charity is suffer, charity suffereth long. And it's kind. I mean, no matter what, no matter what's done to you, no matter what hurt, pain, whatever the case may be, somebody offended you, whether they did it intentionally or unintentionally. Long suffering is you. You're not gonna let that stop you from doing, pushing the truth. You're not gonna be grudging. You ain't gonna hold no grudge. You are gonna suffer long. That person come and apologize. 
you're going to forgive them. Like Christ said, 70 times 70. No matter how many 10 times they wrong you or you feel that they wrong you, if you approach them and they apologize, keep it pushing. You're going to keep that's, long, that's being long suffering. You're not going to let something, you're not going to let suffering stop you from doing the work. You're not going to let suffering stop you from studying, stop you from watching classes, stop you from doing the work. Um, read. Charity envy if, envy if not. It says charity envy if not. Um, well, you know what? Go back, go back to read the first part again. Charity suffereth long and is kind. So it says charity suffereth long and is kind. No matter what, no matter what happened to you, how many times it happened, you're going to stay in the spirit. You're going to stay productive as it relates to this truth. You're going to stay peaceable. You're not going to put up a wall to your brothers and sisters. You're, going, you're, going, you're not going to, basically what that is, you're not going to stoop to their level. In a nutshell, that's what they're saying. You're not going to stoop to their level of evil, of wickedness. Uh, go to Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 4. You're going to understand when you being long-suffering and kind, no matter what come your way, no matter what your, your people, so to say, may do to you, you're going to keep pushing this truth. You're going to keep, you're going to keep striving and putting in work. You're not going to let something that somebody do cause you now you holding a grudge. I ain't going to do nothing no more because you gotta, we all got to remember we serving the most high, and he weigh our actions. We weigh our actions. We weigh what we, what, what he, what he, we weigh, he weighs our actions and how we respond to certain things. Proverbs 26 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly. So it says, answer not a fool according to his folly. That's, don't stoop to a fool's level. He doing foolish things to you, you stay in the spirit. Yes, correct them. You stay in the spirit, though. You don't, you don't return evil for evil. Somebody do something evil to you, you know, you know what, now, you, now you're getting revengeful, avengeful. You want to do something back to hurt, to cause them harm. No, don't answer a fool according to his folly. Don't let a fool get you out the spirit. Read. Least thou also be like unto him. Uh-huh. Answer not a fool. I'm sorry. It says, answer a fool according to his folly. Least he be wise in his own conceit. It says, answer, now it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So if a fool is doing something foolish, you let him know he being foolish. But you stay in the spirit. You let him know he's doing something foolish because now he, he know what he did was wrong. He's not going to be wise in his own conceit. Because if you let a fool run with their folly, they're going to think they're doing right. They're going to think they're going on the right path. They they're going to think what they're doing is correct. Back to 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. So charity envieth not. Charity ain't, 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 ain't going to have that hateful spirit towards somebody because they have something that you, you don't. They're able to memorize scriptures better than you, so you, you, you envious of them. You don't like them. You dislike, you dislike them because they're able to remember scriptures a little quicker. They catch on and understand they come out of class, come on, they, they pick it up like that, but it take you a little longer. Now you, envy, you have an evil envy towards your brother, meaning that you would, do, you would do something that would hinder them from continuing to grow. You would try to do something to stop them from, from growing in that gift that they got. You would do anything. You would do something to the point where you, you would halt their progress. To make yourself look good. That's, that's what envy, having envy is going into. That's, hate, that's a hateful spirit. If, you're, if, if you got a brother or sister that, that pick up and understand them quicker than you, they got a sharp memory, you're supposed to lo love that. You should be like, you know what, let me go and be around them so that I can see what they do and see if I can, so I can see if I can uh, glean from that spirit that they got. Not, not take from so you can make them look less. Jump to, no, from there go to James chapter 5 and verse 9. James chapter 5 and verse 9. The book of James chapter 5 verse 9. 
Grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. So it says, grudge not one against another, lest you be condemned. So don't hold resentment or ill will against your brother, because it's going to stunt your growth and the growth of the nation, because you're holding a grudge. And then if you, if you do decide, oh, you know what, I'm going to hold a grudge, you ain't going to get the kingdom. The Most High going to judge you. That's what it means, says, lest you be condemned. You're going to be judged because you have hatred towards your nation. Because that's what it all, but you don't have, if something happens between you and one brother or sister, that hatred going to stem deeper than that. It's going to, that, that hatred going to come out with your people, whether you believe it or not. You're going to act out of that hatred with everybody else. Whatever grudge you hold, it's going to come out with everybody. It's not just going to come out with that one individual or that two individual. It's going to come out with everybody you come in contact with, the whole nation. You're going to affect the nation. You're going to stunt the growth of the nation because that's sin. That's why it says, lest you be condemned. The Most High will judge you for holding a grudge. You feel like you was wrongly accused, wrongly uh, judged, a wrong assessment. Whatever the case may be, that's that, that is not spiritual. You're not walking in the spirit. You have to repent of that. We are not to hold grudges. Um, you know, I skipped something. Go back to 1 Corinthians 13 and read verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Do if not behave itself unseemly. Seek if not her own. It's not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. So it says charity is not easily provoked. Everything that happened, you offended. Every time somebody say something, you offended. It says charity is not easily provoked. Charity is not easily provoked and thinketh no evil. Those go hand in hand. Because if you always offended by something somebody say, that's going with you thinking evil. You think that your brother or sister is saying something intentionally to hurt you or cause you harm. Um... And then in that, you, you, you easily, when you easily provoke, you easily offended. You walk around, you get offended off things like they walked past me and didn't say shalom. That's not something to get offended over. You don't know what, what may be going. That person may be busy. That brother or sister may be actually focused on getting something done, but you offended. Oh, you walked past me, and now you're holding a grudge. That's not spiritual. That's thinking evil. That's evil called evil surmising. Because you think your brother got a ill, you think your brother or sister got ill will towards you, so they walking past you and not saying nothing. That mean that's not always the case. At the, the least you're supposed to do is going, hey, hey, you walk past, hey, Shalom, you walk past me earlier, and you you find you and that you and, and doing that you will find out, okay, they was busy, they was focused on doing something else, or they they was already in discussion with somebody, they went and grabbed something to go take it back, and they didn't want to lose their thought process. They was gonna they actually was gonna come back and, and salute you and say Shalom. That's being easily offended, easily is being easily provoked. It's things, small things like that. You just automatically think evil because a brother or sister did something or said something. Even in the case that they may have said something brashly or rashly, you can't think evil that is personal towards you. You don't know what type of week that brother or sister had. You don't know what happened. Something happened like that, you just go and talk to them. Hey, I noticed you was kind of, you ain't, you ain't been yourself. You was kind of brash to you kind of brassy at the mouth today. You talk to your debate your cause with your brother. You go and see what's going on with him. Otherwise, you think evil. You run with a grudge. You you run with the thought that you had, the evil surmising thought you had. That's evil. That's hatred. That's showing hatred towards your people. Showing hatred towards your brother or sister. That's not a spirit we're supposed to roll in. Uh, from there, go to the next next thing. Is slander. Another way that we show hatred towards our people is by slander and gossiping. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. And pull up that definition of corrupt. Ephesians chapter 4 and 29. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So let's pull up the definition of corrupt. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. 
read the second. So in, under the transitive verb, read the second and fourth definition. The fruit. It says corrupt. The fruits were transported without I'll being read them corrupted. Two words. Rot spore. Yep. So rot, rot spore. spore. And then read four. To alter from the original or correct form or version. So when you corrupt something, it says you you, you rot or spoil it. I Meaning, think of think of milk. If you let milk go just sit in the refrigerator, it's spoil. It go bad. You can't. It's, it's useless. So if you if you got corrupt communication, that means you you're saying something that's that's um, killing the character of your brother or sister, killing their spirit, because it's corrupt. You're spoiling their spirit. You're putting the spirit on them where they you they 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 you turn them off to this truth. You got corrupt. You got your language and your speech is rotten and spoil and spoiling. And it said to alter from the original or correct form or version. The most high called all us in there. We woke up, we as excited, ecstatic, we got a zeal. And then we come in here and somebody all everything they say is always corrupt. It's always to 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 tear us down and break us down. There's no edifying, there's no bit of building up. That's not a spirit we're supposed to walk in. I'm not done with that definition. Uh pull it back up, we're gonna read the intransitive verb number one and two. So go down, go back up, go back up, right there. 1A, to become tainted or rotten. B, to become morally debased. Uh -huh. Two, to cause disintegration. disintegration or ruin. So when you've got corrupt communication, the things that you are speaking are not building up brothers and sisters' spirits. The things that you are speaking is destroying their spirits. If you're gossiping, you're slandering, you're destroying the character. You're destroying their, their, their spirit because you're gossiping. You, 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 if you're slandering or gossiping, you're making other people view them in, as, as in a way that they're not even, that, that the, in a way that they're not even, uh, that's not their spirit. That's not how they are. But you, but because you gossiping, you slandering. Nobody will never go and get to know that person because they got an evil thought towards them by what you told them. That's corrupt communication. You spoil they com you spoil someone's character to others by lies. That's what slander is. Go to Sirach chapter nineteen and six. Sirach chapter nineteen and verse six. The book of Sirach, the chapter nineteen, verse six. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. So if you can rule what if you can rule your tongue, if you can control what you speak and when to speak, read. It says read, read the first part again. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. So if you can control what you speak and when, you're going you're going to live without conflict. You're not going to always be conflict and causing contention. Read. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. You know when and where to speak, what is edifying. You're not just babbling off at the mouth everything that you heard. Read. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. That's and th gossip. Read. And thou shalt fare never the worse. So you don't go around gossiping, telling other people business. The only time that, that somebody... If the only time that something hits your ears and you're going to tell somebody else, it should be going, you're going to leadership. You're going to, here, in relation to here in Chicago, you should be taking it to 20, 20s and up, the officers of 20 and up, the upper leadership to get a resolution. If it's an issue going on, you're getting a resolution. You're getting counsel on how to handle the matter. You're not just going and telling anybody, your peer, or somebody, uh, your peer or a sister or brother that came in after, you're not just going to tell them just to tell them. You're not venting somebody else's information to somebody. That's gossip. Because by doing that, what you're going to do, that's destroying that brother, that person's spirit because now you're betraying their trust. Because it get, cause what's going to happen, you went and told somebody, it's going to get back to them, and it's going to destroy, it's it's destroy their spirit. Because they confided in you and told you something, and now you went and told somebody that can't bring help to the situation. 
and it got back to them. Now they don't want to talk to nobody. That's hatred. You you just destroyed something. You just destroyed somebody's spirit. Read on. Whether it be to friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives. And if thou canst without offense, reveal them not. It says, and if you can without offense, don't reveal what's told to you. Don't speak of other men's lives if you can't do it without offense. You're going to cause offense if you're just going and tell, telling somebody's business whether you using, let's say you using, you, 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 you're trying to explain something and you're using an example, but you use the person's name, exact, an exact situation. You're going to cause offense. The only time that you should be telling anybody about some, some, something somebody else has been doing or whatever is if you're going to leadership to get counsel on how to handle the situation. Or if you, 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 are, you, are, you, are, you are a tight friend and you know they need help with something, you're bringing it to leadership like, hey, I think they, they need some assistance with this, whatever the case may be. You're not just going and randomly telling that. Go to Proverbs 27 and 23. I want to prove that. Because the responsibility of the leadership is to feed the flock to care for the people, to know what's going on so that we can help. Because if we don't know what's going on, we can't help. Read that in Proverbs 27 and 23. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 23. Be thou diligent to know the state of the flock. Uh-huh. That's it. And look well to thy herds. So it's the responsibility of the leadership to know what's going on within the members of the body so that necessary help if help is needed, it can be provided. If counsel is needed, it can be provided. It can be given to help build up the nation of Israel. But if, 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 if it's gossip going on, you're telling everybody business, you're slandering, things like that, that's hatred. You hate your people. You don't hate just the person that you're that you slandering or gossiping their information. You hate the nation of Israel. You hate the nation of Israel because what, what you're doing is now you're going to be spreading the gossiping spirit because the brother or sister that came in after you that don't know no better, they're going to go on and think that's okay to do it. That's hatred. You're destroying what's trying to be. You're destroying. We coming back and learning who we are. We learning we got to keep the commandments. We trying to build up as a nation, but you slandering and gossiping, tearing the nation down. That's causing it to be fruitless. That's causing the work to be fruitless. Men going out on the Sabbath teaching to bring people in, then you, you go out walking around gossiping and slandering. People going to come in, and they'll be like, okay, they, they full of slandering. Hey, this is a Christian church. I'm going to leave. You're destroying the nation. That's the spirit of hatred. Um, from there, go back to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and start at verse 13. And those are three, th those are three things that display a level of this, that display that you have a level of hatred towards your people. If you're hiding your gifts and talents, you're not putting in work, you're not putting your foot to the plow. And just as, as I say that, we know you, the, counsel, the counsel that we have and that we issue, build your spirit up for that first year. Build your spirit. Focus on studying, getting the basics, the welcome home packet, the laws. Get yourself fully grounded, and then after that year, that's when you start hitting the ground. You, you're supposed to, hey, what can I do? Hey, what you got? What you got? I, hey, this is, my, this is what I can do. You got something for me? That's when you start putting that work in after that first year. But that first year, you should be focused on building your spirit up. Because as you grow, and for the men, Lord's will, as you grow, you become soldier, officer, you're going to have different um, things that you're responsible for getting done. And, and you, you're going to appreciate that. Uh, you don't pre you appreciate that time that you spent in that first year laying that solid foundation. Uh, go to read that in First John, First John three and thirteen. The book of First John, chapter three, verse thirteen. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Hey, it ain't no secret. The world hate us. The world hate our guts because I, as we, when you read the history of Esther, the world hate our guts because our ways are contrary to the ways of the world. We don't follow after the trends of the world. That's why they label us a hate group. That's, that's, we know that already. If we, if we are stingy, no, nah, read on, read, read. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Uh huh. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoso, so who, it says we pass from death to life if we love our brother. We love our brothers and sisters. We show forth that love. But read that, read that, the, uh, I think that's the start of the verse. Let me, 
I'm not looking at it. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Uh huh. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. If you, if he that, it says he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So if you're doing things to destroy the nation, you don't love your brother, and you're going to be judged for that. You're going to receive judgment. Meaning you, you don't love your brother, you're stingy with what you have, you, you're selfish. It's just all about you, me, 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 me. You a slanderer, gossiper, you don't give alms or, or alms deeds. You're not putting in no work. You hide your gifts. That's showing that you hate your people. That's showing a level of hatred towards your brothers. And if that's the case, it says, he that, hate, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death, you're not getting the kingdom. You're just going through motions right now, and you're not going to get the kingdom. You're just playing a part, but not fulfilling the call. Read. Whosoever hateth his brother Verse is 16. a murderer. And ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. Read. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So Christ laid down his life for us. He went through an uncomfortable death so Israel can repent and return to the Father. That's the same spirit we're supposed to have on us. We're supposed to step out of our comfort zone, do those things that's not common for us to do so that we can edify the brotherhood, that we can edify the sisterhood, that we can build up the nation of Israel. Read. But whoso have this world's good and see if his brother have need. So and when, when it says whoso have this world's goods, it's not just talking about money. Because a lot of things, we, we learned a lot of things in this world. My, I use myself as an example. Before I came into the truth, I was in management. I learned various things. I learned various things at the various jobs I had. Learned how to manage. Learn how to manage things and things of that nature. And now I have, I have the, I've been given the opportunity to use those same things I learned before the truth. Now I'm in the truth. So the, this world's good. The things that you learned before you came into this truth and even still are doing with your job or whatever, that's you having this world's goods. Whether it be money, some skills, some talents, whatever it is, you having this, that's you having this world's goods. Because the scripture, remember the scriptures say, we use this world as not abusing it. So it's things that, that's within this world that we got to use to a certain capacity to help push the truth forward. But if you, if you got those gifts and the talents and you're not using them, you hate your people. You hate the nation of Israel. You're just sitting here going through the motions and you have hatred for your people. Read. And shut up his bowels of compassion from him. That's, the, this, that's going back to that uh, the one that had one talent. He hid it in the earth. Read. How dwelleth the love of God in him? How does the love of God dwell in you? How, do you? how can you say you love God, but the things that you have that he gave you to help build the nation of Israel, you're not using them? You're hiding them under a bush. Read. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So when it says that, when it talks about the love of God, that translates to the love of Israel. Because we show our love for God, by how we treat the nation of Israel, how we treat our brother and sister. And when we have that love, we're not going to withhold the things that's necessary to build up the body, to build up the nation of Israel. We're not going to withhold the things that we have to help build up the body. Our actions, that last part is say, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let us know our actions are weighed in the balance. The Most High is judging us by the things that we are doing. He's judging our belief. We say we believe. Okay, what you doing? How are you showing you believe? How are you showing that you love the nation of Israel? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. 
We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.